everybody. Welcome to Give Live. Today I'm here with Rachel D and Dan Maybe, and we're going to talk about mental health and remote work, and we're going to talk about Big Orange Heart and fundraising. So we've got quite a little agenda today. But first, I want to introduce um, my guest today. So Rachel D, Rachel, you and I have talked before, um, and you are a web design a web designer up in Toronto. So you're in Canada, I'm in the United States and Dan's in the UK. So as you pointed out before, we're an international panel, which yeah. I love, that's so exciting. So tell us a little bit, um, Rachel, about what you do with WordPress and um, and how, you know maybe what, what, how, how excited you are to be here today or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, my name is Rachel, as Rachel D, as you said, I'm the owner of Geek Unicorn and we are a women-led web design company in Canada. And we work primarily with women-led businesses and organizations to make them stand out online like a unicorn in a field of horses. And I am so excited to be here because mental health and well-being is so important, not just for remote workers, but also for business owners and for women, especially solopreneurs. So I'm thrilled to be here. And I and and I think anybody watching is going to get a lot out of it today. So stay tuned. Fantastic. And I know you've worked with GiveWP before. We're going to talk yes. about that a little bit later, too. So I want to hear about your project. Uh, but first, I want to introduce Dan Maybe. Dan Maybe is the founder of Big Orange Heart. Dan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Thank you. And again, likewise, I'm really, really excited to be here. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Dan Maybe, uh, the founder of Big Orange Hearts. Uh, we are a registered nonprofit with a mission to support and promote positive well-being and mental health within remote working communities. Um, I'm also uh, the uh, business owner. I run a business, a company called Blue Thirty Seven. Uh, we focus on design and development, uh, predominantly using the open source CMS as uh, WordPress at the core, uh, and tend to do quite a lot in and around the community, uh, the WordPress community. Uh, I've been running lots of uh, events, uh, WordCamps, meetups. Uh, I've been running the WordPress London meetup for many, many years now and uh, gen generally have a real focus and passion for people within our community. Fantastic. Thank you both for being here. And I'm Michelle Frechette. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm the Director of Customer Success for GiveWP. I'm also a board member for Big Orange Heart and have been volunteering with Big Orange Heart for over a year. So um, I have my feet in both sides of this conversation today. So I'm actually going to turn it over to Rachel and let her start off um, our questions today. Yeah, thanks. So I have a question for Dan, and that is, tell me, what is Big Orange Heart? What's it all about? So, um, as I mentioned, Big Orange Heart is a is a registered charity, a registered nonprofit. We are focus our um, focusing our efforts within the re remote working community. Uh, we came out of the um, um, a, a born out of a need, really, for for my own personal. Um, self uh, i was struggling uh, i was a business owner i'd been in uh, i've been self self-employed in one form or another for many many years and i uh, just really struggled with the you know the, the loneliness that i was feeling and the you know the, the isolation that came with being a you know a solo business owner uh, and particularly you know, working remotely not having that traditional working environments having people around you to you know to um you know to just just connect with and bounce ideas back and forth and um so that was that was born out of my own need and it's uh, certainly mushroomed into something much much larger uh, and I'm, I'm incredibly grateful for the community that we have around it you know, that every every single volunteer every single individual that's got involved in the project over the last few years have, that's enabled it to um, come to what it is today and uh, you know, today it's a community of uh, remote workers that are able to connect with one another we have a really active peer-to-peer -peer support community uh, where we've got uh, projects going on such as our life groups uh, that enable people to really connect with one another and build up real uh, you know, circles of trust within those uh, within those life groups uh, and enable people to really communicate and discuss challenges that they're facing here when they're uh, working remotely. That's a, that's amazing. And I love that it was birthed out of your own experiences uh, working remotely. So um, we all, I think, have a, a little bit of an understanding of like why we're, uh, remote workers are so important. And there's been a real global shift and a global change, uh, especially since the pandemic, which is probably going to fundamentally mm -hmm. impact how we do work whether you are a solo, like a freelancer or a solopreneur or even a large company or a large business. So um, remote workers tapping into Big Orange Heart, what are some of the things that they can see in, in the improvements that, or that, they, that they can expect? Like they may be coming feeling one way. How do, you, how do you want them to feel coming out of Big Orange Heart or, or being in Big Orange Heart? 
Sure. So one of the big challenges is really that that isolation uh, that we can often face if we you know if we are working remotely. Um, as you mentioned, obviously the pandemic's come in and we've had you know a huge shift in in many many working environments. For millions of people, have you know, had to change the way that they're you know undertaking uh, their day to day work activities. And we really you know, we wanted to find ways to um, enable people to be able to connect and to have open conversations, honest conversations. We were we were supporting um, you know this community before you know, prior to the pandemic ever hitting. So this wasn't something that was you know, suddenly born out of a need within the pandemic. And we recognise the challenges that we face as uh, individuals that don't necessarily have that in you know in person connection in our working environment. So the ability to come together and have those same um, kind of conversations, you know, what we often miss in the, um, the the remote environment is the kind of the water cooler chats and yeah. the ability just to be able to verbalise your thoughts, you know, whether you realise it or not. If you're sitting opposite somebody or sitting next to somebody. You might be talking about things that you're just allowing your brain to process and allowing you to deal with those thoughts um, you know, externally, which really does you know, kind of does have a huge benefit on us. And yet when we sit in our office in our own you know, on our own, um, you know, independently without anybody else around us, we can often get, you know, I certainly find myself getting stuck in my own head and you know, yeah. just going around in questions. So having that ability to be able to connect with others and be in an environment which is set up to be safe and is set up to be, you know, enable the individuals to have those conversations. Um, it's really where our life groups come into play. The, the, the life groups are you know, around, around six people within a group. Um, and that group over time is intended to really build a, a, you know, a trust for one another. And we try to pair up individuals that have different experiences so that, uh, You've got that you know, that varying conversation and those varying varying experiences in the discussions within the life groups, uh, and it just enables you to be able to have those you know those conversations that you may not be able to have when you're um, you're in in a, in a remote environment. Yeah, that's so good. I remember when I did work in an office environment and I was a part of the IT department, oftentimes the IT person would come over to my desk and just start chatting through their problems. And I would start chatting through my problems. And before you know it, we both solved our own problems and we would say, all right, thanks for the chat. And we were both very aware that all we were doing was talking out and like solving it ourselves, but just being able to, um, have a conversation with somebody who has at least a little bit of a knowledge of where you're coming from and what it is that you do. And, you know, so you're not explaining all the technical babble and blah, blah, blah. Um, so when you talk about life groups, this is really interesting to me. So how can like, um, who, who are these life groups primarily composed of? Like what types of industries and things like that? And how can people sign up? So we have quite a wide variety, um, and this has been the wonderful thing about this. We, um, as I say, we started out focused with initially uh, started out focused within the WordPress community, uh, and we were doing a lot. We were very active within the WordPress community, and we still very much are. You know, the the, the, the WordPress community really is at the heart of everything we do. Um, but equally, we, we we'd always intended to expand out into the wider remote working community. Mm -hmm. So. Um, what that you know, what has um, the the impact of that has meant is we've got a, a far wider selection of experiences, skills, knowledge, and understanding coming into these conversations and coming into these life groups. Um, if anybody's interested in getting involved, uh, then head over to big bigorangeheart.org/join. Uh, we'll send you an email. We'll send you various bits of information. Uh, you'll you'll get an invite into our Slack community. Uh, we've got an active community there. Um, Externally, the Slack community probably often looks quite quiet because a lot of it happens uh, within these uh, life groups, within these conversations that are very much intended to be um, you know, uh, kept behind the closed doors because we want to ensure that people are uh, feeling safe and feeling secure in those conversations. And uh, as I say, it's why we limit it to uh, around six people within a, within a life group. Um, and those, you know, those individuals are then intended to build up that, um, as I said, so the, the trust within it and have those conversations. So we try to make sure that we've got, you know, we may have somebody who has some design experience. We may have somebody who has you know, some marketing or somebody who, um, you know, has a completely different uh, set of knowledge and experience. So we can have that cross pollination and that cross discussion uh, within those groups. Um, and they're really there for people just to, um, you know, there's no real agenda. Um, it's about coming in and, you know, today, you know what, 
I've got this client that I'm having this issue with, and I just, you know, I've been stuck in my own head. I'm not sure how to respond to this email, I've, you know, and having somebody just to be able to, you know, as I say, verbalize those conversations and those thoughts with, uh, it's really where the, uh, the community comes in. That's amazing. Well, I don't know about y'all listening, but I am signing up for a life group. <laughs> <laughs> Because I am definitely missing the water cooler talk for sure. I mean, yeah. last, uh, I think it was a couple months ago with, when Bridgerton was on, I had nobody to chat with about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm actually not in a life group yet. I haven't made that leap to the next uh, level. But one of the things that I find is that there's, you know, most of us have business Slack groups and we're talking about the marketing channel and we're talking about the design channel and those kinds of things. We might have a water cooler channel where we can just kind of shoot the breeze or whatever. But one of the things about the Big Orange Heart Slack is that there are channels set up just to do check-ins, like how are you feeling today? You know, the lounge where you can kind of anything goes. There's a channel for spoonies, people who are who deal with chronic illnesses, like fibromyalgia, like, like I do. And having other people that have similar things that are going on to you is it's comforting, right? So it's one of those places where you just feel at home immediately. It's like people get it. They don't question you. It's not like, well, you don't look sick, you know, all those kinds of things. And it makes a real difference to have a community built around not just the mental health, but the things that go along with um, that can cause mental health issues like chronic illness and things like that. So for me, I just like, I, I, I volunteered like a year and a half ago. I'm like, hey, do you need help with anything? And Dan's like, sure, you know? And before you know it, I was like all in because I found my community. And I mean, I love WordPress. I'm definitely one of my, you know, a, a big community person there. But then finding my niche within Big Orange Heart was just like coming home. That's amazing. I love that. And I think you said something really important about mental health, which is that physical component. And mm -hmm. I remember, I know on Big Orange Heart, Dan, you focus on the biopsychosocial. Am I saying that right? Oh, yes. so, yeah. yeah. Can you unpack that a little bit? Because it was the first time I'd ever heard it and I loved it. So tell me more sure, about the biopsychosocial. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we're looking at the we're looking at the impact here in relation to uh, yeah, our mental well being and uh, our physical well being is directly there's a direct correlation between our physical health and our mental health. Mm. Um, and then to add into that uh, that, yeah, that that Venn diagram, if you like, we're then talking about our social experiences and our social environment. Uh, and it's really making sure that we, 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 we've got um, uh, ways of supporting individuals within our community across those three aspects. So we're looking at physical health, mental health and our, our, our social, our educational side, uh, our educational health. So we, we delivered, <clears throat> excuse me, we developed uh, four health hubs um, and our four health hubs cover uh, physical health, mental health, uh, skills health, and the wider umbrella of mental health. So we're looking at the, the ways in which we can support, uh, you know, uh, from a holistic perspective, we want to ensure that, you know, if we're talking about, um, you know, large components for some individuals in relation to their their mental health is poor physical health and working at how you know how can we support that how can we educate individuals that are working remotely it's i know for myself i can, I can be incredibly guilty of spending far too many hours sitting here at my desk in front of the screen yes, absolutely hour after hour after hour and then you know that it, there's an incredible issue in relation to that in terms of you know poor physical health um so for me, you know, needing to get up, needing to step away from the desk, you know, to, you know, relax my eyes, you know, physically stretch my body. There are lots of things that then go on to us, the impact our, our mental well-being. And then, of course, it's also the, uh, you know, the social isolation that then is associated with you know, or can be associated with working remotely. Uh, so to, to support that, we deliver events and you know, we, we encourage the community to come together. We were delivering events you know, pre, uh, pre the pandemic. Uh, in person, we've, we've uh, had a really active events community uh, within the charity, which I'm incredibly grateful for. But we needed to find ways to then continue that as soon as we moved into uh, this, this, you know, this virtual, this remote environment, as we couldn't couldn't physically come together. Uh, and that's really where um, you know, the concept of uh, WordFest was born. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about WordFest because I saw it for the first time. Was it your first time you did it? The the most recent one or yeah? It was. Yes. Yeah. Well, yep. it, yeah, it, no, it, it was fabulous. So, so for those who don't know, tell us a little bit about what WordFest is and what people can expect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, WordFest was actually born. We, we, as I say, before we, before the pandemic, we were delivering in-person events and we needed to find a way to continue that. So we deliver um, a, 
currently through at the time that we were delivering a, an event once a month through the charity um we very quickly um you know tried to figure out how we could get into a virtual environment and uh you know quickly realized that zoom wasn't appropriate for our virtual events you know there was just so many issues that we ran into with it so uh you know being advocates and supporters of open source, we went down that route and we've actually de developed a, a, a full platform that we now deliver our events through, but also enable other communities to access the event, uh, the, the platform free of charge through the charity so that communities can continue to come together. And through that journey, we realized, well, actually we can just scale this platform up. We can, we can you know, really take this up to a, a much greater level. You know, we were seeing sort of average 100, 150 attendees on our monthly events. Uh, we moved that into delivering two events a month through you know, through the charity and also enabling other communities to come through it. So we were seeing, um, you know, eight, nine, ten events a month coming through the platform, um, which, as I say, ultimately then had the we had the conversation at board level and said, look, we've got the platform, you know, we've got a need for for you know the community are wanting to come together, uh, and it's also an opportunity for some fundraising activities within it. So. Um, yeah, WordFest was born. Uh, we had, I think, Michelle might want to correct me. I think we had about three months we turned around from concept to delivery for the first WordFest. Yeah, so we, we I think it was October, we were looking at um, Giving Tuesday, which anybody in fundraising is familiar with Giving Tuesday. We were trying to decide if we could pull off an event for Giving Tuesday. And we looked, we're looking at the calendar. We literally tried to figure out like if we did, could do a four hour event or a six hour event. And that quickly morphed into, well, what if we did something bigger? And so we kind of scrapped the idea of doing something on Giving Tuesday and came up with the idea of doing an actual WordPress centric event. Um, and yeah, we pulled it off <laughs> ridiculously quickly um, with the holiday, the major holidays in between as well. And afterwards we kind of looked at each other like, why did we do that to ourselves? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah, I've been there too. <laughs> right. It's projects. like it, it's one of those things that it's it doesn't seem Herculean until it starts to snowball. And yes. but the but the end result was um, you know, like like 2,000 people coming together over 24 hours and supporting one another, networking with one another, learning from each other. And I mean, I, I think I got four hours of sleep during that 24 hours. I know Dan didn't sleep at all. Um, we had our Discord channel going for the organizers. And I'll tell you, the, the event itself was amazing. But even from an organizer perspective, it helped me um, through that ex being a part of the experience of putting together WordFest um, just filled me in a way that I needed to uh, for my own mental health, for that feeling of belonging to something bigger. And so I think that, you know, people who were speaking, people who were volunteering, um, you know, people who are emceeing, it just kind of gave everybody a sense of community right around that one 24 hour event. And so before we'd even signed off that day, we're like on the Discord channel talking to each other like, so when are we doing this again? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it in six months. <laughs> That's, that's amazing. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing like the thrill of production and getting it done and getting it out there and really seeing an impact with the people who come to experience it with you, right? So that's yes, amazing. Absolutely. So what, do you have a date for the next WordFest? We do. We do. Okay, lay it on me. <laughs> July 23rd okay. is the next event. Uh, call for speakers and sponsors and community uh, members or community, I forgot what community the word partners. is. Community partners is open right now. Uh, registration is, should open next week as well as the call for volunteers. Okay, right. So if you're interested in volunteering or speaking or helping out in some way you can visit bigorangeheart.org.com no, and, 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 and register right so word, wordfest.live oh wordfest yep yeah okay, so we've, we've got a dedicated site for this so wordfest.live for anything wordfest Perfect. related um mm -hmm. we've got um as michelle mentioned we've got our call for speakers is currently open that actually closes on mon this monday coming up so we've only got a few days left uh, to get speaker applications in uh, on monday we will also be opening our uh, registration so for for anybody that wants to attend the event i uh, can uh, join us as an attendee uh, we do uh, and also the call for volunteers will be opening uh, next week as well so there's, there's a lot happening over the next uh, next few days or so around uh, around wordfest 
Um, and it is, it's a 24 hour virtual festival of WordPress. And it's a really is a, a global celebration. The, the reason we went for the 24 hour format was, you know, we tried to, um, you know, time zones are a challenge in relation when it comes to uh, delivering virtual events. There's lots of different models, you know, do you do it over multiple days? Do you do, you know, do you just pick a set time and say, you know, it's this particular window in a 24 hour period we decided that no, this is a this is a global celebration of the community and it's about bringing the community together so 24 hours made sense because there's at some point over that period some everybody has an opportunity to potentially be with us uh, during uh, at the event that's great exactly. i love it okay so if you're interested in that go check it out um back to mental wellness though you are coming into another high production uh you know moment of getting out this festival again uh looks like sounds like lots are happening tell me what do you do personally to take care of your mental well-being like what are what's your best tips that's a really good question um and i think it really everything obviously every every single person is different every single yeah. individual has a different experience and you know will uh you know some people may be able to relate but others may you may not be able to at all um I, you know, for me, it's about um, quiet space. It's about meditating. It's about being able to quiet my mind. Um, I, I find several apps that are really, really beneficial for me personally in relation to this. I have a, a real uh, challenge with sleep, uh, if I'm honest. It's something that I've had challenge with for many, many years. And um, meditation is something that really helps in relation to that for me. Uh, concentration is, you know, it's another thing that I need to, you know, Lack of sleep can often impact uh, that. that, uh, that yeah, of course. Um, I find things like Brain FM as an app is a really good app for me for uh, sustained periods of concentration. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I find that the um, you know, the Calm app there's um, there's various elements of that that I find really good for uh, sleep. So at different times of the day, I'll use different um, different solutions to help me. Uh, but equally, physical physical exercise uh, is again is a huge one for myself. Uh, so being able to get out and you know just burn off that energy, uh, and particularly if I'm you know, spent too many hours sat here in this chair, uh, being able to get out uh, get out on the bike and you know just burn off that energy is something I uh, I, I need to do. Like yeah, that's right. Yeah. One of one of the things that I do is at the end of my work day, I just go for a walk around the block and that helps clear my mind and get me physical. And then I can sort of reset. And now it's like family time, home time. Michelle, for what me, are some of your tips? Yeah. So for me, I live alone. And especially during the height of the pandemic, I was working and living in my, you know, at the time, small apartment. And so for me, it was absolutely being able to reach out and talk to people. So I would just set co-working times where I could just open Zoom and just be with somebody, even if we didn't talk. Um, and then there were Friday nights where I had a standing Zoom meeting where we all had a glass of wine and just chatted and laughed together. Things like that, that, that were are super important to me because when you live alone and you, you know, we're working alone, I do have an office here now and I have coworkers, which fills a lot of that for me. But it, I'm a very social person and not having that social aspect was really difficult for me during the height of the pandemic, especially. Um, so for me, it's, it's about that outreach and being able to talk to people, um, whether it's a DM on Slack or it's a Zoom call or a FaceTime with my mother, whatever it is, you know, to be able to talk to people. Um, and, and aside from that, staying hydrated is really, really important for me. I, get, yeah, I find that I sleep, sleep, sleep better as long as I'm not sleep drinking too much water right before bed. I can sleep <laughs> right. better. Then you're waking up to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, good hydration, um, good food, things like that are really helpful as well as just, you know, maintaining I'm taking the meds that I'm supposed to take and things like that. My, keep my blood pressure where it needs to be. Um, so those all actually contribute to your mental health as well, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Cause it's a part of that, like that holistic approach to your mental well being. It's the physical mm -hmm. environment. It's the physical body. It's the, it's not only the thoughts, but the emotions it's mm -hmm. yeah. All those things wrapped in. I love it for myself. Uh, uh, my family was, uh, playing Euchre every week. So we would play Euchre and then oh, nice. my friends and I have been using house party, the app. So we'll get together and chat mm -hmm. and play games on that. And it's a lot of fun. Um, I think we, sorry, sometimes I think 
Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say sometimes it's also doing things that aren't screen related, right? Because we are in a in an industry where we're on screens all day, you know. And then at the end of the day, it's like I just want to. Sometimes I sit on my phone and watch TikTok, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I my eyes are twitching because I'm on screen so much. So I actually started doing other things like getting back into meditative drawing, doing Zen tangles, and then also um, building Legos. Like I built five different Lego sets over the course of the last year, just for something different to do and to keep my mind and my eyes and things, you know differently occupied than I would be if I was staring at a screen again. Yeah, I think that's, I think so that's really important. I think that that, uh, you know, if we're in this, kind of, well, certainly we're in this, this digital space working you know, in a digital environment. For me, something I really struggle with is it, it, it's very intangible. You know, I don't, there's nothing there. I may build a website, but what, you know, what is the thing? I can't touch it. I can't feel it. Um, I've, I've had a real passion for woodworking myself. Uh, so getting, you know, getting into that and you know, being able to pick up a piece of wood and actually produce something and you know having a tangible thing a tangible result um is, is something that i find is is very therapeutic for myself that that's that's great yeah no i love the hands-on thing and it's so true about being in front of the screen all the time um to make something or do something with your hands is so important and especially if you can do it outside and then you're getting you know the sunlight and things like that um so we had a question from taylor it was uh does anyone else have any tips on maintaining your mental well-being so i think we covered you know just uh keeping your mind uh clear with some meditation doing some things with your hands making sure that you're exercising and sleeping well um, is there anything else that you can think of? I, I know I do, I do one thing if I could share that. And that is the, <laughs> the night before I think about how I want to feel at the end of the next day. And so that sort of, and I oftentimes will write it down or draw a little picture of myself. Um, you know, and that really helps because that sets my brain in motion while I'm sleeping to, uh, produce that outcome the next day. So it sounds really silly, but I think about how I want, I think, and I sort of embody and feel the way I want to feel the next day. And it works wonders. You know, I don't think that's silly at all. I think setting intention is everything, right? So if we intend to be happy, it doesn't mean that we necessarily will, right? Because things happen to us and our mental health can get in the way, but it's half the battle is intending to be happy and successful and fulfilled. That, that makes a big, huge difference. So you're not silly at all. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. <Yeah. laughs> Taylor, those, those actually, mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say those affirmations, you know, just, just walking yourself through and, you know, it, uh, you know, setting that mindset. Um, you know, we talk about the positive, positive mental attitude and you know, there's all sorts of, you know, routes that we can go down in relation to this but you know just setting an intention that this you know this mm -hmm. is how I would like you know, this is how I foresee my day is you know so it's, it's a real positive so okay absolutely so, Michelle, don't it's not not silly at all <laughs> <laughs> Taylor's offered a suggestion she says she compartmentalizes her space so she has places for each thing she does so eating in one place sleeping in another relaxing so you're not working in all of your spaces that you use for relaxation and Amy June says she blocks space on the calendar for self-care during the work day, making sure she always has lunch scheduled and marked as busy, which I think is super important. Calendar blocking is a really good technique to make sure that you have some self-care and mental health time during your day. Absolutely. Well, yeah, we've, totally. Yeah. We've had several, I've had several conversations with individuals that are in um, uh, you know, quite confined environments for their working environments uh, you know, through the pandemic and you know, where they've been in the lockdown situation. Um, and you know, lots of conversations with people where they've, they've physically walked out of their back door, walked around the block and coming through the front door to just create a sense of here's work and here's home. Um, and it's mm -hmm. so difficult for, for so many where they've you know, been confined to a very small space for their working environment mm -hmm. uh, to try and create that. But that idea of creating a, this space over here, as, as small as it is, this is for work. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate and mm -hmm. I've got a, a a room that I can shut the door and I shut the door I'm now in the rest of the house is home this part of the house is my is my work environment if, and if you're late to work it's your own fault right <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of traffic on my walk you wouldn't believe it right. um, <laughs> so humor yeah, is yeah. also very important <laughs> Having a ritual for sure. I noticed one of the things speaking of places was, I mean, I do have an office space in my house. I'm very lucky. But at the when I first started working in my home, this office space was not set up in any way. The walls were cracked and, you know, the paint was like 10 years old and you know, it, it was, it was really shabby and, and sad. So I took 
several weeks just on my, cause it was my spare time to fix it up. And now it's a nice, calm, tranquil space. So even um, uh, organizing where you're at in a way that creates that peaceful, calm, tranquil space or whatever it is that you like, if it's, if it's exciting and, you know, vibrant, whatever it is um, for me, it's peaceful and calm, but uh, you know, taking some time and doing that in whatever way you can mm -hmm. um, if it's just cleaning it down or, or whatever um, is really, you make important. a good Point. Last week, I was having some anxiety about doing an online, I, I had to record a session for an online summit that I was working on. And, uh, you know, I was talking to Taylor, actually, and she said, we'll just walk away from it for a little while. And so what I did is I opened up my desk drawer, which was a mess. I took a half an hour to organize my desk drawer. And at the end of that, I felt calm, like I had brought some sense of order to something, was able to move ahead and just like go ahead and knock it out of the park, you know, so at least I thought I knocked it out of the park. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay. So great. Yeah. So Taylor saying, yeah, I live in an RV. So my spaces are very small. Yeah. I feel you on that. Um, I also have a small space, but um, make the most of it for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll get back to some, some stuff around give W P. Uh, what, uh, tell me what, what are some of the uh, fundraising challenges and wins that you've seen in the global community? So it, Ooh, it, I think maybe I have frozen. Oh, we, uh, oh, we, we still hear you it. though. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> getting into the, yeah, getting into give WP, we, we've, we've been using it for our donation solution. Um, oh, are we still? Yes. We're still yes. Going. Oh, it's okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I think, uh, I lost Rachel. Um, yeah, so GiveWP has been a, ph a phenomenal solution for us. Uh, you know, within Big Orange Heart, we've, we've um, you know, been a heavy user of the uh, of the um, you know as a, a the piece of software for a long, long time now, and um, we love to we love to bend it and stretch it and <laughs> pull it in ways that possibly it's not meant to be. Um, as developers, it's always it's always interesting to see how we can take the tools and. Uh, you know, and stretch them a bit further um, than the, uh, <laughs> the team has initially intended. Um, but actually, the, the, the as a solution, it's been perfect for us. Um, you know, when we needed when we started out, and you know, we needed you know, to get things up and running quickly. It you know, it just works. It just did what we needed it to do. And you know, now we've had time to evolve and iterate upon our you know what we're doing. Um, it's a great piece of software that we can, you know, we can extend and we can, you know, take out you know, to in a different direction. Um, we, we've, I've actually spent quite a lot of time today uh, doing a lot of work, you know, in in relation to it. We're trying to pull donations that are being made on one website over to another website, and you know, there's all sorts of challenges that we've we've got in between those two pieces of uh, information. But Give WP really enables us to be able to have that flexibility and uh, you know make it you know it's, it's extensible as we uh, as we need it to be. In terms of the uh, the fundraising side, it's been a you know a phenomenal solution for us through you know our day to day fundraising, but equally through our our larger events such as WordFest. You know having having the ability for uh, attendees to make donations you know as they register through an event or as, you know, as they're in attendance of an event. Um, it's been a you know a, a tool we just simply you wouldn't be able to deliver Big Orange Heart without at this stage. Yeah, as a matter of fact, right, right now we have uh, two forms on the Big Orange Heart site. One um, is the, you know, the general donation and you can do recurring or one-time gift. And with it, you, we've got a optional gift associated with it as well. And uh, the ability to, to sign in for our newsletter and get tips, uh, weekly tips on how on doing uh, mental health, being better, um, supporting your mental health. And then we also just implemented a new form on there for tributes giving. So if you wanted to give in honor of or in memory of somebody, you can do that as well. Oh, that's, that's, that's great. That's so nice. Yeah. My own experience with uh, Give WP has been um, when the pandemic hit, uh, one of my clients was very reliant on um, local businesses. And so when local businesses were closed, um, or even just, you know, uncertain and, you know, all those kinds of things, um, they lost a lot of revenue, a lot of business, and they happened to have a, um, um, a charity associated with their, uh, with their board um, that they had had since 1984 and they had never set up a website for it. 
So they, cause they just never needed one, I, don't, I guess. Um, and so once the, when the pandemic hit and they realized, oh shoot, we should really maybe be doing something to help this. Um, they decided to build a website um, and we did it in record time with GiveWP. I'm not even joking. We got, we, we had the decision to build the website on a Thursday and it was launched live by Tuesday uh, with the help of GiveWP. So, um, and it certainly um, it was so fast, so easy to put together. I mean, it was a small website, but the, the real powerhouse with that was the GiveWP plugin. I think we even had a little bit of an issue connecting PayPal because it was a really old PayPal account. And uh, your team was right there with us, helping us troubleshoot that and solve that. So that was an integral part of getting that launched. And they raised uh, 16 thousand dollars in about two weeks to three weeks uh which was amazing considering that they had never done any kind of initiative like that before and it was just so so fast like they just you know we got in the car and hit the gas and went with it so it was really uh, so impressive to it was impressive to watch you do that for sure to like we had you and I had a conversation about give and like then you were like oh by the way do you want to see what I built and I was like it hasn't even been a week yet what do you mean <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> we did it right fast. <laughs> for sure, for sure. It was awesome. Yeah, it was great. So I love that. Um, so you talked about some ways in which you use GiveWP for fundraising. Are there any other like kind of creative ways that maybe some people don't think of? I always uh, thought of using it as like a buy me a coffee button. You know how you see those sometimes on on sites? It's like, mm -hmm. is, is, that, is that, are there some um, different ways you could use GiveWP if you're not a charity or uh, talk yes. about Yes, I actually have a tip jar on WPCoffeeTalk.com using give WP for just that, just that reason. So, and it, you know, and it is coffee related. So maybe it is kind of like a buy me a coffee. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and Taylor's I, saying that um, we helped crowdfund her RV. So a friend, when she was looking to buy her RV, put together a website. Um, I can't remember exactly. It was, it was something like taylorfueled.com or something like that. Maybe she can type that in there and uh, it had give on there. And within I want to say within a week, fueltaylor.com, that's what it was. Within a week, um, she had everything she needed to be able to buy her RV, which is her new home. So she actually lives there and it's still live. The site is so fueltaylor.com if you want to see how it looks um, on that site. So you don't have to be a charity to use GiveWP. We've actually seen people put together their, um, their wedding registries. Um, to raise money for the different things that they wanted oh. to be able to purchase for their wedding and yes. afterwards um, using GiveWP. And we've seen people, I had, we had a photographer once, um, want to be able to offer uh, photos of newborns. And so get, did it for every newborn had, had a, um, a form so the family could contribute to photographs for that mother and their, and their child. So there's lots of different ways that you can use Give creatively for sure. Yeah, I think we've, we're using the uh, the tributes element as uh, on Big Orange Heart for the e card um, as an e card solution. So you can actually deliver an e card and make a donation at the same time. Yeah, they don't like it when I say that I hacked our system to do that because they don't like the word hack. But I I did it in like an IKEA hack kind of Mo way. Not modified. Like a, there you go. I modified it like an like an IKEA modification to say not you could right. use tributes to create to generate e cards. And so yeah, that's a, a fun way to use it as well. For sure, we've seen some of our customers do that. I think the uh, yeah. the, the beauty. Okay, of yeah, the, I love that. I think I think the beauty of Give is you've got both you're both um, ends of the spectrum, if you like. You've got you know it's a it's a very easy solution to be able to implement in a very short space of time, should you need to. But equally, it is extensible, and you can take it beyond you know beyond what it's mm -hmm. you know, originally intended, you know, and build on additional functionality within it. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. So if anybody's listening and you have an idea for how you might want to use GiveWP, I know for sure you can reach out to Michelle on Twitter and probably Dan as well on Twitter. And I'm sure they will be able to help you uh, brainstorm some cool ways to use it. Um, so Dan, I've got a question for you. Is having GiveWP's head of customer success on your board? A oh, she cut out. <laughs> So I think we've got the uh, question. So is is having give WP's head of customer success on your board a secret fundraising weapon? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Sorry, I, my I, internet seems to not be 
no. That's okay. <laughs> Are you working um, with me? Yeah, today? no, absolutely. Michelle, uh, I, I, well, while we're here, I just want to say a huge personal thank you to you uh, for everything that you've been doing into you know, giving into Big Orange Heart. Um, it, you know, it's been an incredible journey. This we've we've worked with some phenomenal volunteers across uh, across Big Orange Hearts, and it really is down to the community. It's down to the people that are you know, donating their time, volunteering their time, to enable us to deliver this. Uh, and it, it, it's um, it, it's making a real world impact. You know, we've we've got individuals that have you know fed back that you know they're and you know not wanting to make light of this. You know, they are still alive today because mm -hmm. they've been able to access the support that they've needed at the time that they've needed it and it's you know yeah. through you know through the actions of you know, the likes of yourself michelle and you know, others uh, on the board that have, have enabled uh, enabling us to be able to continue to to grow uh, but absolutely yes it's it's about working with individuals that are you know, passionate mm -hmm. driven and you know have a have a, a desire to uh, continue to enable big orange heart to be within our community so uh, michelle thank you very yeah. much well, it's an honor to be able to be part of the team and to contribute in the way that I'm able to do. And that's, you know, in part due to um, Give WP and they're um, lending me on occasion to, you know, d during the day meeting here and there and that kind of thing. So um, absolutely thanks to Give WP for that as well. Yeah. I do want to um, put, could have posted here in the chat as well. We do right now have a fundraiser going on at Give WP specifically for Big Orange Heart. And that is if you go to swag.givewp.com, we do have some items there that are for sale that are co-branded. And I can show you my mug here, which will give you the design pattern. I'm not so bad at this, okay. So there's the design, your mental well-being matters. And on the back, it's co-branded with Give and Big Orange Heart. And we have, um, I think, sweatshirts and t-shirts, tote bags, and this really nice big mug. Um, and those are all available and all of the profits from the sale of those items will go to Big Orange Heart and they are only available this month which is Mental Health Awareness Month. So get it by the end of May if you're interested in picking up um, one of those items. Welcome back Rachel. <laughs> Hi sorry internet's spotty. I think it must no be worries. <laughs> no worries. The other thing I did want to point out is if you go to bigorangeheart.org we have a really great blog there and we have some people who have contributed truly from their heart, different um, stories and different tips and ideas and things that really can help um, if you're looking for some support with, um, with how you're feeling about anything. So um, I, wrote a, I wrote an article there almost a year ago or maybe even more than a year ago about using um, Amazon Echo. I can't say the name or mine will actually activate um, Amazon Echo to manage anxiety. And your well-being, um, and so there's a lot of articles, a lot of things there. And then recently, I wrote an article about how my brain is like a container ship stuck in the Suez Canal, um, you know. <laughs> and Dan has contributed <laughs> yeah, with help. Trust me, it was with help. <laughs> um, Dan has written uh, many articles there um, from his heart, and we have just so many wonderful contributors on that blog. So definitely check out that blog if you're looking for some ideas there too and we're always looking for individuals that if, if you're looking to share any experiences any sure. stories and of course we can go for a fully anonymized uh, story as well if uh, if anybody out there is out there wanting to uh, to share mm -hmm. we'd love to hear from you yep. You can reach out to us. You go to bigorangeheart.org. There's a contact form there. If you're looking for more information on Give, you can go to givewp.com. Um, anybody on the customer success team would be happy to answer your questions. And as Rachel said, you can always reach out to me directly. I'm uh, always happy to talk to anybody anywhere. I have so many channels of communication open. It's not even funny, um, but I love talking about Give and how it can help your organization or you individually. That's great. So we covered a lot today. We covered Give, we covered Big Orange Heart, we covered uh, WordFest Live, <laughs> mental wellness. So before we go, just wrapping it up, what's one thing you want people to take away from today? I'll start. I'll say for me, it's that you're not alone. No matter what it is that you're experiencing, no matter whether you have anxiety, depression, uh, euphoria, whatever it is, uh, you, you are not alone and you're not the first person, you won't be the last person to experience those feelings. And if you do feel like you are in the depth of despair, reach out because your mental well-being, you're worth it. Whoever you are, wherever you are, people care about you and you are absolutely worth 
seeking help and staying here. I love that. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I just want to completely echo that. I mean, that, that is the, the key takeaway from all of this. It's, it's you are not alone. We, we are here as a community. You know, we, we can support one another. So uh, yeah, you are not alone. That's amazing. What about you, Rachel? Do you have a, a tip to add? Well, no, I echo those same sentiments and I am going to jump right in and go into one of those life groups. So <laughs> come join me there. Come be in my life group with me. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me, Michelle and Dan. Thank you for having me. It's been such a wonderful pleasure. Well, thank you for hosting us today, Rachel and Give Live. Thank you, Dan, for being here and for all that you um, do for the community. Uh, we'll see everybody next month uh, on Give Live. Check out our website, givewp.com. Look for the blog and uh, sign up for announcements and you'll be able to know when all of these things happen. So thank you both so much. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see everybody soon on givewp.com. Thank you all so much. Bye.